to the book of Second Chronicles. Second Chronicles, chapter one. Glory to God. Second Chronicles, chapter one. there just say I have the word. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Second Chronicles chapter 1. Hallelujah. I'll start reading it. Hallelujah. For the sake of time. Solomon spoke to all Israel, to the captain of thousands and of hundreds, to the judges and to every leader in all Israel, the heads of the fathers' houses. Then Solomon and all the assembly with him went to the high place that was at Gibeon, for the tabernacle of meeting with God was there, which Moses, the servant of the Lord, had made in the wilderness. But David had brought up the ark of God from Kirjath, Jerusalem, to the place David had prepared for it. For he had pitched a tent for it at Jerusalem. Now the bronze altar that Bezalel, the son of Uri, the son of Hur, had made, he put before the tabernacle of the Lord. Solomon and his assembly sought him there, and Solomon went up there to the bronze altar before the Lord, which was at the tabernacle of meeting, and offered a thousand burnt offerings on it. On that night, God appeared to Solomon and said to him, Ask, what shall I give you? And Solomon said to God, you have shown great mercy to David, my father, and have made me king in his place. Now, O Lord God, let your promise to David, my father, be established for you have made me king over a people like the dust of the earth in multitude. Now give me wisdom and knowledge that I may go out and come in before this people. For who can judge this great people of yours? Then God said to Solomon, because this was in your heart, somebody say, in your heart, and you have not asked riches or wealth or honor or the life of your enemies, nor have you asked long life, but have asked wisdom and knowledge for yourself that you may judge my people over whom I have made you king. Wisdom and knowledge are granted to you, and I will give you riches and wealth and honor such as none of the kings had who were before you nor shall any after you have the like. May God add a blessing to the reading of his word. Hallelujah. I want to talk to you this morning, the very first Sunday, man, of 2022, about going from visitation to habitation. Visitation to habitation. Hallelujah. It is the year 2022. How many people are happy to be, amen, in the new year? Amen. Right. If you're happy, just clap your hands. Folks, are gone. Hallelujah. Praise God. It's a blessing, man. We made it, didn't we? A lot of people didn't make it, right? But we made it. <laughs> Thumbs up, right, Brother Jerry? Glory to God. We made it. We made it. Praise God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. We are in a brand new year. We're in a brand new year. Hallelujah. We have, how many know that there's, we have two different calendars. We have the Gregorian calendar, which says we're in the year, what? 2022. Well, we also have the Hebrew calendar, which says we're in the year 5,782. We're in the year 5782. And I want to start off with that this morning, amen, for those that did not hear a New Year's Eve message or anything like that, over to God, and that will propel us into this message, amen, on this morning. Amen, the Jewish, um, Orthodox Jews, or the Jewish culture calls New Year's, where well, they have four new, they have four different New Year's. A lot of people don't know that. The Jewish culture have four different New Year's, amen. But one, amen, of their New Year's is called Rosh Hashanah. Man, that was on September 6th through September 8th. Rosh Hashanah, amen, which exemplifies a new year, amen, and it means something different than our January 1st New Year's, amen. But long story short, it is a new year, amen. And so as we go to God, go over into the year 5782, amen, we've, we've shifted, all right, from 5781. Hallelujah. 
Now, I'm going to break down the numbers. What you need to know about the Jewish numbers is that every number is a letter. All right? And every number and every letter has a meaning. It, it actually comes into a word. Amen? Let's start by looking at, at the, um, the numbers in Hebrew and their meanings. Five is the letter He. And in Hebrew, it can mean here is to be disturbed or behold. 5782, I'm breaking down 5782. Seven is the letter Zayin, and in Hebrew can mean crown, weapon, or sustain. Eight is the letter Chet, and in Hebrew it means life. Two is the letter Bet, and in Hebrew means house. Eighty is denoted by the term Pei, and we need to know that we are living in a decade of Pei. 5780, last year was 81. Now we're living in 5782. We're living in a decade of pay. Pay means mouth. If, you, if I was to put up, amen, the Hebrew character of pay, it looks like a mouth. Amen? And how many know we're living in a decade of the mouth? Amen? For those that was with us last year and the year before, we've been talking about this for years now. We're living in a time of the mouth. And how many know the devil wants to stop our mouth? Praise God. Somebody should have said amen right there. Amen? Two years ago was 5780. Again, 80 is the is the letter or the number pet, which means mouth. How many know that life and death is in the is in the power of the mouth? And what happened two years ago? 5780 or 2020, we had coronavirus, right? COVID-19, that's what they call it, right? Because it started in December of 2019. Praise God. And what, what immediately started happening? They tried to make us shut our mouths. Immediately, they start us, put the mask on. Don't say nothing. Close the churches down. We don't want nobody doing anything. Don't come around anybody. All right? And so what you need to know that we're living in a decade. We're living in the last times, I mean, where the devil, I mean, has put his program out there to make us be quiet, to make us shut up, to shut us down. Amen? And he has shut a lot of us down. I'm going to talk about him in this message. Where we go? Amen? But he, he's trying. Not just to shut the church down. He's trying to shut the men and women of God down. He's trying systematically to shut the kingdom of God down. And how many know it's up to us not to let that happen? Anybody here with me this morning? I don't know about you, but I'm not going to let that happen. Amen. With my last breath, I'm going to be saying, hallelujah. I'm going to be giving God praise. Amen. We want to be opening up some Bible somewhere and talking about God, even if it's just me and my wife. Glory to God. Amen. Praise God. How many know? Glory to God, that God is worthy, amen, of our praise and our honor and our glory. So pay is the symbol of the mouth in the breath. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Um, I'm reminded of Esther, amen, when Esther was about to go before the king, amen, and Mordecai came to her, and she was having reservations about going to the king, and she said, I might die. And in Esther 4.14, praise God, uh, Mordecai said, for if you remain completely silent at this time, Relief and deliverance will arise for the Jews from another place. Mm. Hallelujah. But you and your father's house, glory to God. How many know that even if we be quiet, glory to God, how many know that God's going to raise somebody else? Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm reminded of when Jesus, when he goes into Jerusalem, praise God, amen, hallelujah, and, 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 different, and people were worshiping him, amen, and the kids were worshiping him. And some people tried to get some people to be quiet. Glory to God, and Jesus said, leave them alone because if they don't worship, don't worship the very rocks. Glory we'll to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Gonna worship. How many know that God demands worship? He has commanded us, amen. He has communicated to us, praise God, that He wants us to worship Him. Psalm 22 22 says, I will declare your name to my brothers in the assembly. I will praise you. What is the assembly? The assembly is this. The assembly is not just, just, amen, but all over the world, amen. Hallelujah. The church, amen, the ecclesia, the yes, spiritual God. body, the physical body. Hallelujah. How many know the Bible over and over and over again teaches us and commands us and directs us to give him praise in the midst of the assembly? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now, how many know that if you don't do it when you're not in the assembly, you're not going to do it when you're in the assembly? Come on, come on. So how many know that we have to cultivate a lifestyle of praise? We have to cultivate a lifestyle of worship. Yes, God. Hallelujah. When I wake up, I made a pact with God. Yes, God. The very God. first thing I say, I say, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank, thank you, Jesus. Jesus. And then I don't wake up and scream it all over the house. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. So everybody, my, my son and I will run in there. But sometimes I just whisper, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. You know? It's really quiet. It's just between me and God. It ain't about nobody else. 
Amen? It's just between me and God. And how many know that when you have a relationship with God, praise God, you do different things like that. Praise God. Amen? Just like we have couples in here with husband and wife, right? you do different things. Praise God. Amen? Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. To let the other person know that you love them. Hallelujah. So we put these meetings together. We see something emerging here. It says, here it is. Behold, the crown, weapon of life, the house. Hallelujah. And I think now more than ever, the house that is both a crown and a weapon in life is the house of God. Yes. When you put all those 5782 together, praise God, hallelujah. We, when, when you break down, praise God, hallelujah, the two, praise God, hallelujah, amen, praise God. In the Hebrew letter, it is the letter bet, mm -hmm. praise God, hallelujah. And so last year we were saying that, praise God, that God is gonna honor whatever you say out of your mouth. Praise God. Now, praise God, the onus, amen, according to the Hebrew, praise God, hallelujah, is about the house. Praise God. And so now, and we're going from just visiting, amen, to habitation because God is now want to honor everything that we say, everything that we do in the house of God. The yes, glory God. of God, yes, God is coming back to the house yes, of God, God. Yes, God in 2022, in 5782. Mark my words. Praise God. Hallelujah. Look to God. God works through, amen, different signals and signs. We just have to have wisdom to be able to see it. Hallelujah. I'm using that word wisdom on purpose because we're going to talk about Solomon, the wisest man that ever lived. How many of you know that we need to know what, be able to determine signs and we need to be able to determine the seasons that we're in? Praise God. Hallelujah. Amen. And so the glory is coming back to the house, the house. of God That's it. in 2022. Hallelujah. That's my word. Hallelujah. It's already, it's already happening. Praise God. God has already shifted yeah, different God. people. He's just closed some things now, closed some things off, shut some things off. Amen. He's exposed some people and all this kind of stuff like that. And watch this year. Watch this year. Watch. Y'all heard it here. The very first Sunday in 2020. Watch. You want to listen to some pastors. You want to see some ministers, missionaries, vendors. People are going to stand up in this year and say, listen, enough is enough. And I guarantee you, the glory is coming back to the Hallelujah. house of God. Hallelujah. Praise God. Now, check this out. When you take the number 5782 and you look it up in the Strong's Concordance, Praise God. Hallelujah. Some of y'all know what that is. Amen. That's a, that's a place where you can go. Every word in the Bible, hallelujah, the Old Testament was written in Hebrew. The New Testament was written in Greek. How many know every word in the Bible, praise, according to the original scrolls, is recorded? And that's why when people say, oh, you know, some of the Bible you're reading has been manipulated. We don't know we're reading. It's a lie. We know exactly what the first words were written, the original scrolls. We know exactly which words were literally written. And when you go to the Strong's Concordance, you can find those words in the Hebrew or the Aramaic Greek, and you can find out what the English translation of those words are. Praise God. But the interesting thing is when you go to Strong's Concordance, praise God, hallelujah, the Hebrew word in Strong's for 5782 is you are, and it means to awaken. It means to awaken. The word er is used throughout the Old Testament. It can be used to express phrases in English like stir up, excite, raise up, arouse to action, or to open one's eyes. And it's used nearly 75 times and has been used to describe an eagle stirring up her nest. Glory to God in Deuteronomy 32, 11 and in Isaiah 54, 4, the prophet said, he awakens me by morning. He awakens my ear to hear. It's also used in the song of Deborah in Judges 5, 12, when it says, awake, awake, De Deborah. Awake, awake, sing a song. So when you put all of this together, I think the word for 5782 is that the house of God is about to awaken. Come on. Hallelujah. I'm talking about the physical church. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Not just the body. Don't be fooled by these spiritual deep people, theological people say, oh, the ecclesia is the people. The ecclesia, that's true. Praise God. But these the same people that ain't doing nothing. Same people that don't want to do nothing when it comes to God. Don't do nothing when it comes to God. And, I'm, and the question is, if God had to depend on you to run his church, how would the church look? Come on. Oh, praise God, somebody. If God had to depend on you, praise God, from the pulpit to the door, on us, amen, from the balcony to the floor, amen, hallelujah, to propagate this church, to push this church, what would the church like, look like? That's a deep question. It's a serious question. Praise God. Hallelujah. Some of us, praise God, we'll be missing in action like crazy. Church be shut down. Church won't be ready. Nothing will be ready. Glory to God. How many of people don't think about church until the night before the church or the morning of? If that, 
Praise God. Amen. If you care less, praise God. But you're talking to people, these people, they swear they're so spiritually, theologically deep. They swear they know so much about church. Glory to God and God and what God wants. Praise God. But if God had to depend on you to run his church, what would the church look like? Yeah, ask yourself that question. Praise God. Because that's where we're at. And so I believe that God is awakening us up. Praise God. In this year, praise God. Because how many know we all need to do better? Praise the Lord, somebody. Hallelujah. The church needs to do better. We need to do better. Hallelujah. As a kingdom. Amen. We need to be more kingdom-minded. Praise God. Hallelujah. And we, do, we need to do better. We, we so much. We talk so much. But I believe that God has taken us from all of this talky talk and all of this stuff. I mean, we know how to preach. We know how to sound deep and all of that. But God wants people that are ready to do something. Praise God. He's looking for people that want to do ministry, not just talk ministry. Uh, I'm a preacher myself this morning. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Praise God. It's good that you got the scriptures. It's good that you know what to say. But what are you doing with the power that God has placed on the inside of you? What kind of ministry have you done? What kind of ministry are you doing? What kind of ministry are you even thinking about doing? Praise God. A time is time out. Praise God for all of this. Amen. We try to big up our own names and make our own businesses and make money on the side with ministry. God is not into that. Amen. And God is awakening and arousing his church. That's why he's knocking all of this stuff down. Praise God. I was looking at people years ago. They used to put their little, their little schedule up on social media. Oh, I'll be here. I'm going to preach over here. I'm going to be in this country. This that. All that stuff got knocked down. God, that doesn't excite God. That does not impress God. God is looking for people that want to do real ministry. He was looking for people that's ready to go out and get the lost and bring them in so that they can be saved. When the last time you talked to somebody who did not know about Jesus and told them about Jesus and they got saved? When the last time you did that? When the last time you laid your hands on somebody, say in Jesus' name you will be healed. When the last time you prayed over somebody? When the last time you had an altar call? When the last time you went out and did something? When the last time you gave somebody some food? When the last time you gave somebody some hot tea or cocoa? When the last time you went out and passed tracks? When the last time you did anything that's really considered ministry? When the last time you went somewhere that's not comfortable, praise God, and did ministry? When the last time we do that, when we have done this kind of stuff, this is what God is looking for. There's going to be a great awakening. Praise God. And I believe that God is doing it right now. Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. We're being awakened from. What are we being awakened from? Everyone asks for awakening, but no, but no one really talks about the process of awakening. Often in our private lives, awakening comes on the heels of a major crisis. Like the pandemic and other things, like losing your job and getting sick, and all right, such as the loss of, uh, you know, uh, family member, family sickness, all right, or relationships falling out. Well, um, before the awakening can happen, there is often a shaking that precedes it. Yes, God. Glory to God. We need an event of some sort to shake us out of the way we, we, that we were living and inspire us to become something more, yes. something better. Oh, yeah, Hallelujah. Corporate shaking looks like cultural chaos that involves the realignment of nation. And I think that in 5782 or 2022, we're going to experience even more shaking around the world with supply and food chain, food chain shortages. Amen. Getting worse. I believe that rising gas prices, glory to God, amen, are going to occur in this year. Praise God. Inflation of the dollar, followed by the dollar losing its status as the world's reserve currency. Do you know? Praise God that it will put us in, in the state of biblical proportions if we do not fund the government. It almost happened two or three times last year when they say they're not going to fund the government. Why? Because the Democrats are playing with the Republicans and all that kind of stuff. Do you know that that will put us in, in some biblical proportions? It has never happened. Praise God. The dollar, praise God, the world still runs by the American dollar. And if we go one time without funding the government, praise God, it will put everything in total array. And how many know that's what the devil wants? Watch out for the Bitcoin and cryptocurrency and all that kind of stuff. Because, you know, I'm not, I'm not being weird and I'm not being extremist, glory to God. Amen. But the end game is that's the devil's playground. Praise God. Amen. He wants to take you away from regular money and all of that and make you have a currency. Amen. When we talk about Antichrist and the end of the world, you got to have one world religion. 
You got to have a one world government and you have to have one world uh, finance. Amen? And that's what cryptocurrency is. The Bitcoin, what is it backed by? Nothing. It's backed by technology. It's backed by something that we, some ethereal thing that no one can put their hands on. The cryptocurrency is not backed by gold. It's not backed by any precious metal. It's backed by rich billionaire tycoons that have started this thing and that's supposed to control the world. Praise God. So if the government, praise God, falls down, I mean, you know, that's why we need to look at CNN and all that. Not follow everything, but we need to be aware. Praise God. And we need to understand that our vote does matter. Praise God. Glory to God. I mean, but if it all falls down, it's ushering us into a time when we cannot fight for ourselves. We ain't gonna be able to control anything. So imagine, once we get to this time when we talk about the market of beast, when all that finally happens, all of that, when they control how much money you have in your account, how many know if you don't do what they say, they can just take all your money away? Because it's controlled by a computer chip anyway. Do it God. So if you go to church and they tell you not to go to church, they can just take all your money away. If you can talk against some future vaccine or whatever, how many know they say, okay, we're gonna shut them down? Glory to God. How many know they gonna control everything? Glory to God. So we have to be very, very careful. Praise God. All of these things, we're, we're heading to these things. I'm not saying it's happening in this year, but we have to be very, very careful. Praise God. Hallelujah. Terrorist attacks, needless wars, natural disasters, all these things are going on. Amen. And the Bible tells us that these things are only going to accelerate. So what are you going to do? What are we going to do? Amen. Are we going to, see, are we going to continue, amen, to move on? Or are we going to live in fear and stop and hide in our closets and scroll to God? Hallelujah. Amen. And stop doing the work of God. We need to understand that God is still on the move. Hallelujah. God ain't scared. Praise God. He ain't worried. And we, he knew everything that was going to happen before it happened. Yeah. He knows everything that's going to happen before it already happens. Hallelujah. That should encourage somebody. Somebody should say amen right there. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The only resolution to our economic shaking, restlessness, and the loss of religious freedoms, and even the threat of losing liberty itself, will not come through just revival, awakening, or intense intercession alone. God is saying that the end of shaking is tied to his original mission. It is tied to the church being a house for the nations. And when the churches start rising up again, when the churches, amen, get its backbone again, amen, when people, amen, start coming back into the house of God, doing things for the right reasons, glory to God, how many know we want to see the world change? Amen. amen. There will be a pushback, amen, against the agenda of the devil, amen? Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. During these last couple of years, while chaos has been increasing, the house of God, hallelujah, is also experiencing a, a corresponding increase in glory, in boldness, praise God, outpouring, presence, and harvest. Hallelujah. Voices have been rising up from all over the world that have never been heard before. That's bolder than any voice that we have ever heard on planet Earth. And these voices are going to continue to arise. Hallelujah. Now I wanted to get us all that backdrop. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Before I get, amen, to the message of the day. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. Praise God. But we hear it. Hallelujah. We are the house of God. Hallelujah. Praise God. Glory to God. Amen. And so in this year of the awakening, in this year, praise God, hallelujah, of God taking us, amen, to a time of habitation. We, when glory is coming back to his house, we need to be aware. Now watch the story. You might say, well, I gave you all of that backdrop. Glory to God. Amen. Because we're talking about Solomon. Hallelujah. And if you was to read, amen, the chapter right before Second Chronicles chapter 1, we see that David gave a declaration that Solomon is going to take over for him. Praise God. And what David did is that he prepared all of the effects for the church, for the temple. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. That was going to be made. The, the first temple. Amen. That was going to house, so to speak, the presence of God. Didn't he do that? Hallelujah. And wasn't David a mighty man of God? And didn't and then God say that David was a, a man after his own heart? Glory to God. How many know that David had it in his mind, glory to God, hallelujah, to build an edifice, glory to God, where people can come and lift up the name of God. He had it in his mind. Who put that in his mind? Of course, that was God. Praise God. Hallelujah. And so, praise God, how many know that he built up his son, amen, to want to succeed him, hallelujah, and glory to God and continue in his work. 
David could not build the house of God because the Bible said he had too much blood on his hands. Amen. He was an adulterer. He was a murderer. He did a lot of stuff. David was, he was a real dude, but he still was a man of God. Glory to God. Glory to God. And God loved him. And the great thing about David is that he knew how to repent. And God loved it. Amen. And he knew how to praise God and worship God. And God accepted him back every time. Glory to God. And so, how many know that he had an anointing? Praise God. And because of the way he raised his son, Solomon had an anointing as well. Anybody here? Amen. Glory to God. Amen. Solomon had an anointing as well. And how many know that Solomon's anointing, anointing depended on the obedience of his father's anointing? Glory to God. Oh my God. Solomon's anointing, Solomon's success depended on the anointing of his daddy, of his parents, so to speak. Likewise, how many know our, our children's anointing depends on yes, the anointing God. that we're supposed to have, that we're carrying within ourselves? Glory yes, to God. God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm always encouraged when I see the woman of God bring her son on her sons. Glory to God. Amen. I'm always encouraged when I see. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Amen. People bringing, hallelujah, the children into the house of God. But y'all, you know, that's what we're supposed to do. We're not supposed to come to church and leave our children at home in front of in front of Facebook and Instagram and TV and videos while we're in the house of God, praising God. How many know we're supposed to bring our children in the house of God with us? Anybody here with me this morning? Yes, God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. That way we are protecting the anointing, glory to God, that's on their life. We're making sure that they're getting the same information that we're giving. That we're getting. Amen. They make sure that when we're praising God, glory to God, hallelujah, that they are also praising God. Hallelujah. So to, to all of the parents out there, your children's anointing is dependent on your obedience to the law of God, meaning God's word. Hallelujah. And children, that's me. That's just why you can't be worried about what everybody else is doing. Glory to God. Hallelujah. You can't be worried about what Johnny and Susie is doing. Yes, Praise God. God. Amen. Because God has a purpose on your life. Glory to God. Hallelujah. And parents, you can't be worried about what other parents, amen, that does not love God the way you do are Come doing. On. Come on. Hallelujah. Because I don't know about you, but I love my children. I love everybody else's children, but I love my children probably a little bit more. <laughs> amen. Glory to God. Amen. And I want to go to heaven, and I want, I want him, and I want all of my sons and all my daughters to go to heaven with me. What good is it if I'm evangelizing the world and they're going to go to hell? How I many that would break my heart? That would break my heart. Amen? So how I many know we got to put priorities, amen? And we got to go all out, amen? Praise God for our own children. Glory to God. Second Chronicles 1 1. Hallelujah. It teaches us that God can be with you. I read it again. It says, Now Solomon, the son of David, was strengthened in his kingdom, and the Lord his God was with him and exalted him exceedingly. It teaches us. That God can be with us. Hallelujah. Do you know that he can bless you? He can exalt you? And you can still not be living your full life? That's it. You can still not be living up to your full potential and your purpose in your life? Doesn't the Bible already say that, that God was with him and exalted him exceedingly? He already had that, right? God was already with Solomon. Why? Because of the obedience of his father, his dad. Glory to God. David, praise God. Glory to God. But he still was not living his best life. Hallelujah. In 2022, I want to say this. Amen. Let's stop settling and let's start thriving. I don't know about you, but you got to decide in your spirit that you want to be the best version of yourself. Yeah. Amen. I decided that, amen, in the last quarter of last year. And I think I always had that. But God, amen, he's been talking to me a little bit differently. Praise God. He said, what are you doing? Glory to God. And then we are we are going around, amen, as a as a substandard version of ourselves. Glory to God. Amen. When God wants you really to be your best version of yourself. I wish I had a church here this morning. Yes, God. God wants you to be the best version of yourself. Hallelujah. Glory to God. He ain't supposed to be walking around all busted and disgusted, looking all gloomy and messed up and praise God. Glory to God. I want, I don't know about you, but I want the best that God has for me. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Amen. If we were to die, we don't know when we're going to die. When we get to heaven, how many know we want to see all the blessings that God had laid up for us? He said, I had this, and I had this house for you, I had this thing for you, I had this for you, I had this business, I had this over here for you. You didn't walk in none of that. Because ah, you didn't think that you was worth any of Hallelujah. it. Amen. But when God changed your mindset, yeah, and God. you realize who you are in God, Glory to God that you are a child of God and he wants the best for you. How I many you know that that's when you finally start saying, I'm going to be the best version of myself. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. And that's where we got to get to. Glory to God. Hallelujah. This being the best version of myself has to do with 
all of me. Physically, praise God, my body, amen, I'm in the gym, praise God, I was, I was running every night, running 10 miles, praise God, every week, praise God, glory to God, and I kind of ran my body down, I got sick, I went in the hospital, then, but praise God, glory to God, it ain't going to stop me, praise God, amen, from physically being in shape. Glory to God, that the devil is a liar. He ain't going to stop me. Glory to God, praise God. Amen, my clothes, amen, praise God, my car, glory to God. It ain't about all of this stuff, please hear me. Glory to God, amen, but to a point, how many know that what you look like and what you're doing, it shows what you think about yourself. Just hear me on that, all right? Praise God, I ain't talking about go out there and go beyond your means and do some dumb stuff. I'm not talking about that. Please hear me, I'm talking about a mature mindset. Glory to God. Praise God. Glory to God. Be content with what God allows you to have. Praise God. But how do you know that when you know your worth, hallelujah, you don't let anybody allow you to live beneath that. You won't be content living beneath. Praise God. Some of us, that's the issue right now. You're not content because you know, praise God, that you're supposed to be, hallelujah, somewhere else. Glory to God. I'm not talking about out of this, out of this location. I'm talking, amen. Please hear me in the spirit realm, amen. Glory to God. And things in life, praise God. You know that you are walking beneath you know, Listen, glory to God. And you have to make it up in your mind. Listen, I'm going to get off of this little thing that's been keeping me handcuffed. Glory to God. And I'm going to do better. God, whatever you have for me, that's what I want for me. Whatever God has for you, it's for you. And how many know the devil can't steal it? Nobody can't take it. He can't destroy it. And all you got to do is say, God, whatever you have for me, hallelujah, I receive it. Anybody receive that this morning? Hallelujah. What God has for you, it is for you. Hallelujah. And no devil in hell can steal it from you. Praise God. Hallelujah. My mother, uh, Reverend Dr. Olin Richard, she's come to preach for us plenty of time. She has a saying uh, It goes like this. It says, be loyal to the royal in you. Be loyal to the royal in you. And how many know it's so true? Glory to God. Hallelujah. We are royal priesthood. We are a chosen generation. Praise God. How many know we are king's kids? Praise God. Yes, and I've decided again in my life just recently that I'm going to be, hallelujah, the best version of myself. Yes, I'm going God. to be loyal to the royal in me. I'm a prince. Really, the Bible says we are priests. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Amen. So we are like little miniature kings walking on the earth. Because I have the power of my father. Amen. Daddy, I'm a father who I have heaven. Glory to God. Amen. Walking on earth. Hallelujah. So please don't misunderstand. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Because being the best version of ourselves does not have everything to do with stuff. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Being the best version of yourself also has to do, amen, praise God, with being in a, in a right state with God. Yes, the Bible says, seek ye first the kingdom of God and what? His in his righteousness and all of these things shall be added unto thee. Yeah. Hallelujah. So being the best version of yourself, meaning that you are not a sinful person anymore. Mm. Hear me clearly, I ain't said that you ain't never going to sin. But you're not walking in sin. Hallelujah. You're not looking to sin. You're not, amen, praise God, presumptuously sinful anymore. Praise God. Man, being the best version of yourself, meaning that you are walking in righteousness of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The Bible says, for there is none righteous, no, not one. All are righteous and filthy rags. But the, all, the Bible also says that we have the righteousness of God. Yes, it is God. the righteousness of Jesus Christ that we, hallelujah, we attach to ourselves, which makes us righteous. Yes, God. And when we put on the armor of God every day, praise God, hallelujah, glory to God, and we remember who we are, amen, and we invite, amen, and invoke Jesus in our lives, how many know that we are walking in the righteousness of God? The Bible says we are the righteousness of God. Yes, God. Sinners are not the righteousness of God. Hallelujah. Christians, so-called Christians or god fearing people, whatever, people that espouse Jesus Christ, we are supposed to be the only righteousness, amen, that anybody can see. We're the only Jesus that anybody ever sees if we're living right. Glory to God. That's called living your best life. To be in the best version of yourself, meaning that you are in right standing with God. God. Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Yes, God. What you accept and what you don't accept shows what you value and how much you value That's about it. yourself. That's it. Remember that. Hallelujah. Now let's look at some more of the elements that propel Solomon's already good standing and status with the Lord to an even higher level. All right? In this chapter, we're not going to read it, and I read a little bit of it, but it's in right there, Chronicles 1. We see that the Ark of the Covenant was there. Who created, who, who made sure that the Ark of the Covenant was there? David. Again, the dad, the father. He positioned the Ark of the Covenant. 
What does the ark represent? The ark represents the presence of God. He, the ark represents the presence of God. The ark symbolized the presence of God. And one of the most disrespected attributes of God in this last generation yes, is his presence. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Anybody hear me today? Yes, God. One of the most disrespected things about God, amen, when you talk about God and things of God, amen, is his presence. Mm. Nobody thinks that they need to be in the presence of God anymore. Come on, come on. That's one of the most disrespected things about God. And that's the reason why people think they don't need to come to church anymore. Can I be plain? They think they don't need to come to church anymore. Because they think they don't need to be in any real presence. Oh God, just let me log on to the computer. I don't want the real presence of God. I don't want people singing around me. I don't want people trying to hug on me. I don't want people trying to smile and talk to me and tell me about the goodness of the Lord. And I don't want real ministry. I don't want it. I don't want it. I don't want the presence of God. I don't want the choir anymore. I don't want the praise and worship team anymore. I don't want prayer teams anymore. I don't want nobody trying to lay hands on me anymore. How I many you know that's what this generation is shifting to? They don't want the presence of God anymore. It's one of the most disrespected things in this last generation. And this is why people think that they can be successful without God. If you think that you can be successful without God, you're already lost. You are already unsuccessful. This generation focus is on self, not God. And that is why the church is faltering. Praise God. Hallelujah. But the individuals are appearing to be blessed. Glory to God. But they want to find out soon. Praise God. That is all a lie. Make sure that the devil don't fool you. Especially in this year. Glory to God. To make you think that it's all about me. It's not all about you. Amen. Praise God. If you are maturing in the things of God, it's supposed to be all about God. You're supposed to say, in this year, it is all about God. Praise God, because if you honor God, he's going to honor you. If you honor his house, how many know he'll honor your house? If you honor the body of Christ, he'll honor your body. Praise God. How many know you know when you know when you're going wrong, we're doing for things for the thing. When you're doing things of God, amen, and it becomes a burden, it, something's going wrong. It's supposed to be a blessing, not a burden. If serving God is a burden, you just went wrong. If it's work, which it is work, don't get me wrong. Amen, it is work, praise God, praise God. But it's a good work. It's supposed to be a blessing. It's a privilege to serve God. It's a privilege, glory to God. Yes, God. Hallelujah. Amen, to do anything, glory to God, in the auspices of God. Anybody here with me this morning? Yes. How many know it's a privilege? God don't have to use you. I read it in, in Esther 4. I mean, when Mordecai told Esther, if he don't use you, he's going to raise up his voice from somebody Hallelujah. else. If he don't use you to clean the church, he's going to use somebody else to clean the church. If he don't use you to move the chairs, he's going to use somebody else to move the chairs. You don't want to preach, he's going to bring up another preacher. You don't want to teach, he's going to bring up another teacher. You don't want to dance, he's going to bring up another dancer. God's going to use somebody else. His work is still going to go forth in the earth. Somebody is still going to be obedient to what God says, and they're not going to worry about what nobody else said. And where is that going to leave you? Where is that going to leave us? Praise God. And so that's why, amen, we have to do everything that we do as unto the Lord, not as unto man. And you'll never go wrong. If you're doing things as unto man, praise God, that's why you're stressed out and all messed up and busted and disgusted because you're doing it for the wrong reasons. How many know God is looking at our hearts? And when your heart is wrong, now you're going wrong. One of the things in the elements in this chapter, praise God, I don't know if I'm going to get to it, praise God, but later on, praise God, when Jesus, I mean, when God came to Solomon, he said, Solomon, what do you want? Praise God. And then and Solomon, praise God, he says, I, listen, I'm, he, you put me as the leader of your people. Glory to God, I can't do this without you. God, I need wisdom to be able to lead your people. If you're reading the next scripture, and I think it's verse 7 or verse 8, 2 Chronicles, it says that because this was in your heart, Solomon. He says, because this was in your yes, heart. Yes, yes, 
Yes. I'm not only going to give you wisdom, Solomon, but I'm going to give you everything Hallelujah. that you did not ask for. Hallelujah. Why? Because it was in your heart. Hallelujah. God is looking at our heart. Hallelujah. Praise God. And if your heart ain't right, yeah, God. God will allow some things to fall down. Yes, God. Praise God. God knows what you're saying in the middle of the night. He knows when you're talking about the church, talking about the pastors, talking about things that's way above your grade level. Praise God. How many know that God will smack you down? He will shut you down. Praise God. Because your heart ain't right. Praise God. Some of us, we only do things we think we're serving, but you only do what you want to do when you want to do it. That's not serving God. If you only do what you want to do when you think you want to do it, that's not true servant, servitude to God. You're supposed to be ready, available at all times. God, whatever you want me to do, I'm here for you. Even when it gets tough, I'm here for you. Though you slay me, yet I'm going to trust you. I don't care when it don't look good. God, when it don't feel good, I'm here for you. You can use me. They stoned Paul three, four times. They left him for dead. They tried to kill him. Paul was still preaching. Yeah, God. Paul said, I still want to go and talk to the king. I still want to go and talk. You know, nothing stopped. Nothing really stops a real man or woman of God. Nothing. It makes you mad. When the devil comes against you and try to mess you up, all it should do is put more fuel in you. Yes. I'm going to burn his kingdom down. I don't know about you. Praise God. Amen. The devil put me in the hospital a couple weeks ago. And all I said, I'm going to burn his kingdom down. I said, you, you messed up by allowing me to live. Praise God. Praise God. I'm like, if you was that bad devil, you should have killed me. But how many know the devil can't touch you until it's your time? Hallelujah. 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 He can't touch Hallelujah. you. That's why you can't be walking around here scared and timid. Oh, my goodness. Praise God. If God wants you dead, he will allow you to be dead. Simple as that. I don't care about coronavirus, HIV virus, uh, human papillona virus, Omicron, Megatron, Optimus Prime, whatever it is. I don't care. If God wants you dead, praise God, you're going to be dead. Praise God. But if he wants you alive, he's going to keep you alive. Praise God. I know it doesn't matter. But if you're walking around, what you going to do? It's going to be another variant and another variant and another variant. What you going to do? Oh, I'm going to hide again. Oh, I'm going to shut it down again. Oh, are you stupid? Shutting down did not fix anything. We shut down the last two years. We're never going to get rid of it. We got to live with it. Just like the flu. Just like everything else. We got to learn how to live with it. They almost, uh, the mayor, the new mayor of uh, New York, they almost shut his segment off from CNN because they was like, oh, you need to shut the schools down. You need to do this thing. He said, I'm not shutting my schools down. For what? I'm not doing, I'm not sure. They, they, they want him to do the ball drop. He said, for what? We still going to go for it. New York is going to stay on, but we're going to show the world how to stay on. But they was about to shut him down. You know, and they was like, well, when we get the rain cases, and we need to do that. He said, y'all shut it down for the last two years. Did it work? It didn't work, Mr. Scientist. It didn't work, Mr. Newsman. It doesn't work. All it does is hurt other things, and man, and other people losing their jobs. The economy is falling. People being depressed. Many people are committing suicide. More, many, more people on fentanyl, and man, now than ever. More people on depression drugs now than ever. Nobody want to talk about that part. Praise God, glory to God. But all we want to hear about is vaccines. I don't know. I'm not against the vaccine. Get it? Praise God. If you, Amen. If that's what, Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. God is telling you to do. Praise God. Get it? Amen. Protect yourself. All of that. It's not the mark of the beast. It's not. It's not. Praise God. We're not here yet. Glory to God. Praise God. Wear your mask when it's appropriate and all of that. All of that. Do all of that. Praise God. But you cannot walk around in fear. That's all I'm saying. Glory to God. You still have to live your life. You still have to go for it. And do, please don't allow that to attack and to, to, to make the things of God, amen, be known and void. I said it the other day, I put on social media, people were inboxing me like crazy. I said, Walmart I mean, is open, Wawa open, Sheets is open, uh, Rutgers is open, all these things is packed. So why do you shut the church down? Why do we shut the church down? Oh, child, you go to church. Why are you scared of going into church for two, three hours when you could be other places for six, seven, eight, nine, ten hours? You at your job, six, seven, eight, nine, ten hours. You go all these different places shopping. Praise God. You're going into Walmart. You want to be touching the same thing that a hundred other people have touched. They didn't wash it. You're touching it. So stop lying and stop being a hypocrite. Amen. You don't scare you, right? 
you in there with all of these people. They're not wearing their masks. They're coughing right in front of you, sneezing. You still are. Well, I gotta get groceries. How many know you? You still need to be, to be in the presence of God. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. We need His presence. presence. And in this year, glory to God. God wants to inhabit the praises of His people. Hallelujah. We can't do that if we don't open up our mouths. We got to amen, praise Him, amen, and give Him the praise that is due His name. How many know God is worthy? Amen. He's worthy. Hallelujah. He's worthy. Hallelujah, the presence of God is so disrespected, but the presence of God is a terrible thing. Psalm 68 says, let God arise and let his enemies be scattered. Scatter. Let them also that hate him flee before him. As smoke is driven away, so drive them away. As wax melted before the fire, so let the wicked perish, what? At the presence of God. But let the righteous be glad. This is Psalm 68. Yeah, God. Let them rejoice before God. Yea, let them exceedingly rejoice. Sing unto God. This is the Bible. What are we supposed to do? Sing unto God. Hallelujah. Sing praises to his name. Extol him that rideth upon the heavens by his name, Jah, and rejoice before him. He's a father to the fatherless, and a judge of the widows is God in his holy habitation. God set the solitary in families. He bringeth out those who are bound with chains. But the rebellious dry in a dwell in a dry land. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. If things are drying up in your life, glory to God, check your spirit. Check your spirit. Because the Bible says the rebellious live in a dry land. You wonder why you get a little bit of money and God take all of that and more? Glory to God, because maybe you have a rebellious heart. You just won't do what God tells you to do. It's all about you. Praise God. You know more than everybody else. Praise God. But how many know the presence of God can change everything? Psalm, Psalm 68, 8 says, The earth shook, the heavens also dropped at the presence of God. Even Sinai itself was moved at the presence of God, the God of Israel. And that's talking about when the Hebrew children were walking through the wilderness. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Do you know that God's presence is everywhere anyway? So why do we disrespect his presence? The Bible says, Even if I make my bed in hell, God is still there. There's no way we can go that his presence is not there. Glory to God. Psalms 139 7 says, Where can I go from your spirit? Or where can I flee from your presence? Hallelujah. If you don't have peace, then you don't have God's presence. Uh, mm. Why? Because God's presence eliminates worry, God's presence eliminates anxiety, mm. God's presence eliminates distress. How many know in God's presence even eliminates excessive tiredness? You tired all the time, all the time. There's no way you're in the presence of God if you're listen, you gotta check yourself. All right, God, I need to read more. God, I need to pray more. I need to be on my knees more. I need to fast a little bit more. I need to be in your presence. Because the presence of God eliminates all these things. In the presence of God is fullness of joy. Praise God. Hallelujah. Exodus 33, 14 says, and he says, My presence shall go with you. And I will give you rest. So the presence of God, what? Gives you rest. Praise God. While everybody else is worried, I ain't worried. The Bible says, be not anxious for what? For nothing. Nothing. Praise God. But in everything with prayer and supplication, praise God with thanksgiving, making requests on to God. And the peace of God that passes all understanding will fill your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. We're not supposed to be worried or anxious about anything. There is, but, but watch this as I, as I bring this to an end. There is a way to come into God's presence, though. There is a way to come into God's presence. Hallelujah. Solomon knew this. Praise God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. What did it say? It says that he sacrificed a thousand bulls. Praise God. Psalms 95 2 says, Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving. Let us shout joyfully to him with what? With psalms. How I many know we don't have to sacrifice bulls no more? But we can come to him and give him singing. We can come to him and clap his hands. We can lift our hands. We can lift up our voices. And yes, say, Hallelujah. God. We can Hallelujah. worship his holy name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He's a mighty God. He's a big God. Hallelujah. And he's worthy. Amen. To be praised. And how sometimes God allows crisis to come to test the value of his Hallelujah. To his children. Yes. God will allow calamity to come. Hallelujah. But he will fight for his presence. I believe one of the purposes of the plague and 
Uh, the pandemic command and the restrictions and the lockdowns is determined how much does the presence of God mean to us? How much does the presence of God mean to you? Turn your neighbor and say, how much does the presence of God mean to you? Hallelujah. I, I, I mean, because some of us fell away, praise God, from the things of God as soon as they just put a little bit of pressure on the church. As soon as they said, okay, praise God, um, we don't want you to have a church and all that. I mean, oh, people it was quick, fast, and hurt. Shut it down. Okay, woo. Took vacation. They put boards up on the church and all kinds of, some people sold the buildings and went strictly, you know. God just want to see how much do you value his presence. Do you value my presence or not? Do you, how many know God will test you in that way? He will test you. He will test you. Listen, the, the Bible lets us know that Jesus is coming back, praise God, after a lot of tribulations. We're going to see the sign of man. He's going to come in. And how many know he's going to reign on earth for a thousand years? The, the, the Satan, Lucifer, is going to be locked up. But after these thousand years, what? He, Satan is going to come. He's going to be released. How many know that God will test to see what's in your heart to see if you love him or if you don't? Do you love my? Do you love being in my presence, or are you just with me, or you know, doing the good times? Yes, God. When it's easy, when you want, fight, are you gonna fight for my presence or not? It's just like being in a marriage or being in a loving relationship. But we got how many those tough times will come? But if you fall out as soon as the one little tough time, we got how many know you must don't love that person? True love, you will, you will fight for that relationship. Look, I just spent the last five years just because we had a little argument. I mean, we going the other way. Listen, girl, you better come. We want to talk, baby. I love you. Hey, please take these flowers. I'm sorry. You know, ain't God here with me? Anybody here with me today? Glory to God. It's all good. Listen, it's more, it's more good than bad. We're going to be all right. Come give me this hug. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. We're going to finish this thing out. Praise God. When you love somebody, how many of you fight for it? Hallelujah. Glory to God. And the same thing with God. If you love being this person, you're going to fight to be in his presence. How there's always going to be somebody to tell you to fall back. You don't take all that, child. You don't got it. I know there's some people talking about this morning. You know, child, can't you? Can't they just put it online? Praise God. These people are. Some of these people are never going to come back into the house of God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. See the devil trying to stop my voice. See, he don't want y'all here. <laughs> Praise God. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. Somebody say hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Praise God. Amen. Hallelujah. But but I, but I just believe, hallelujah, praise God, hallelujah, glory to God, hallelujah, that, that many people are okay with information about God as long as they have to, as long as they don't have to interact with him. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. But the decade of pay is all about this. It's all about our mouths. It's all about what we say. The power of life and death is in our mouths. And yes, no matter God. what, hallelujah, if you want to make the devil mad, keep on praising God. Yes, God. Listen, even when they talk about you losing your job, watch this. Say hallelujah anyhow. Somebody yes, needs to say that God. right now. Hallelujah anyhow. Somebody say hallelujah anyhow. And they might say you got sick. They might say that you got a sickness or whatever. Praise God. You know, you, you got to walk out of that hospital room and say hallelujah anyhow. God, I still won't praise you. I still love you. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Somebody might be talking about leaving you. Hallelujah. Anyhow. Glory to God. Praise God. There might be a misunderstanding. Whatever the case is. Hallelujah. Anyhow. Glory to God. I'm still going to bless your name. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Because I love him and, he, and, he, and he's worthy. Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. So, and, and then and Solomon spoke to all Israel and the captains of thousands and hundreds and hundreds of judges and to every leader in all Israel, the heads of the father houses. And Solomon and all his assembly with him went to, to the high place that was at Gibeon for the tabernacle of meeting was there. Amen. With God was there, which Moses, the servant of the Lord, had made in the wilderness. Amen. Which lets us know, hallelujah, praise God, that place matters. Yes, God. How many know place matters? It didn't say that he just went anywhere. It says that he went to the high place that Moses had already set apart. Glory to God. Amen. Praise God. It was the temple. It was the tent of meeting. Amen. It was before they had made the temple. And how many of the Moses would have a, a, temp, a tent that they would construct where the presence of God would literally fall. Mm. Would literally fall. Amen. And he put it on the high place. Now this 
if we had time to talk about high place, we don't have time. Amen. It's an interesting subject because this was also a high place that got Solomon in trouble later on. Amen. Because these were the high places that the Canaanites and the Moabites used to use to go up there to worship their gods as well. Yes, God. But place matters. Yes. Amen. Even how many of the world even knows certain things they made that the church is forgetting? Place matters. Tell me, though, you can do anything anywhere, but there are certain places where there's more power, there's more amplified. Hallelujah. When we come together, how many know community? Hallelujah. It's called koinonia. Amen. Amen. Holy fellowship, divine fellowship. Amen. How many know community matters to God? Yes, it does. The Bible says one can chase a thousand. Two, Two can put what? Ten thousand. Ten thousand. That's some crazy math, right? How many know that he's into multiplication, not just addition? Because one plus one is two. Amen? But he says one can place a thousand, two can place ten thousand to fly. Glory to God. The math in heaven is not like here. And so that's why the devil was trying to stop us from coming together and everybody saying hallelujah together, clapping their hands together, giving God praise together, singing together, worshiping together, believing together, having faith together. He's trying to stop it. Hey God. He's trying to shut it all down. And we can't allow it. We can't allow it. Hallelujah. Community. See, the thing about community, if there's no unity, then there's no community. Unity is in the word community. It's not just coming together, but we have to be unified. And when we come, and come together and we are on one accord, anybody on one accord in one place, how many of the devil's in trouble? If the church knew who they were, if we knew who we were, if we had, amen, we were unified, as soon as they said coronavirus, the church should have been able to come together and pray this thing away. That's All right. over the world, instead of shutting down and being quiet and being more scared than the world, praise God. If you just said, listen, we're going to go down, we're going to march, we all going to pray to heads, we're going to pray to God and say, in Jesus' name, hey, whatever principalities and powers, I command you to come down and all that, and we're going to pray together. I believe that the scourge, amen, of pandemic would have been gone. Hallelujah. But praise God that the pandemic does not stop the promise. Glory to God, and whatever God says is going to, amen. Happen is still going to happen in Jesus' name. Amen. Bottom line is that place matters. Presence matters. Place matters. Praise God. Hallelujah. It says Solomon and everybody went to the high place to worship. What did that place symbolize today? The church. Church. The high place is supposed to be the church. Yes, God. Hallelujah. And the church is supposed to be high praise. And the church is supposed to be high prayer. And the church is supposed to be high worship. Hallelujah. And at the church, it's supposed to be high fellowship. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, somebody. Praise God. We have to learn the power of community. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. We, uh, do you know we're more alike than we are separate anyway? We're more alike than we are separate anyway. We're not, we're not, we're not, amen, we're too divisive. And we have to learn how to work together. Do you know that? Praise God. We have to learn how to work together. Praise God. Matter of fact, let me get about five of you up here. Glory to God. Praise God. And glory to God. Can we get this section over here? Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. And Brother Jaden, let me get you. I'm going to put you in the middle. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Hallelujah. And y'all can just make a circle. Make a circle. Glory to God. Hallelujah. And Brother Jaden, you get in the middle. Brother Jaden, y'all just make a circle around him. Glory to God. Hallelujah, somebody got come on this side. Glory to God. Praise God. Glory to God. And make sure, glory to God. Now, if, if praise God, how many know, glory to God, the presence of God, amen. Brother Jaden is symbolizing the presence of God. Glory to God. Hallelujah. And right now, he's very protected, right? Glory to God. Now, make sure I can't get in. I can't get in. Now, make sure I can't get in. I got to let me go right in. Make sure I can't get in. I got to stop from getting in. Glory to God. See? Now, if y'all ain't got the right place, now I can't get in. Make sure I can't get in. Make sure I can't get in. Make sure I cannot get in. Glory to God. We get to, amen. Glory to God. The presence of God. Make sure I can't. Glory to God. Praise God. Glory to God. Now, somebody just step out of the way. Somebody just step out of the way. Glory to God. Glory to God. Now, how many know that? Praise God. Now, somebody just step out of the way. Somebody just step out of the way. Now, glory to God. Now, when somebody get out of the way, how many know that when we're not in our proper place, the devil makes us vulnerable? Yes, God. Anybody hear me today? Glory to God. Anybody hear me today? Glory to God. It makes us now when you stand back in, in, in your proper place. Glory to God. Now, when the man of God is in his proper place, how many know I can't get in? Glory to God. 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 Praise God. I can't get him. I can't get him. I can't get him. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. When you do, praise God. Amen. When we're in our proper places, amen. Give yourselves a hand. Amen. Go back to the I just wanted to show you that real fast. When we are in our proper places, glory to 
God, hallelujah. Praise God, how many know that we can protect, glory to God, amen, hallelujah, the presence of God. The ark of God has to be protected. Praise God. How many know that we have to protect the things of God? Glory to God. We have to protect the anointing that God has placed on our life. And when we're out of place, it makes us vulnerable. Glory to God. Amen. This is supposed to be a place where people can come in and hear songs of Zion being sung. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Praise God. This is what we have to ask each to ourselves. And um, I heard Pastor Woodall say this. Amen. A couple of days ago. Amen. Praise God. The things that we're going through, the pandemic, whatever you want to call it, going around, praise God. Who, who sent it? Who sent it? Glory to God. Praise God. If it was sent from God, I mean, let me say like this. If it was sent from the devil, how many know we can rebuke it? But if it was sent from God, mm. how many know we can't do nothing with it? Glory to God. The other thing is this. If it was something done by man, yes. Glory to God. Praise God. Which man is always messing things up. Glory to God. And it's sin. And God allowed it. How I many know the devil uses our mistakes, amen, to make us fall? Glory to God. Praise God. And how I many know that God can stop anytime he wants? But he will allow it to teach us a lesson. Just like he did to the Hebrew people in the wilderness, amen. Yes. He allowed them to mess up and glory to God. He allowed it. He didn't do it. That was on them. Praise God, but because they was talking about him, glory to God, amen, and they were murmuring, and they were doing different things, how do you know that God will allow some things, amen, to teach you, teach you a lesson? So we have to ask, where did it come from? Praise God, glory to God, praise God. So if it's from the devil, we should be able to rebuke it. Glory to God. But if it's from God, how do you know you better deal with it? Or you can say, God, give me grace. I need the grace. Shield me as I go out my house. And I gotta go to work. I gotta provide for my family. Show me as I go into the supermarket. I gotta go get some. Show me as I go into the house of God. Because all I want to do is give you praise this morning. Show me. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Everybody here with me today. Praise God. God wants to go from us talking, talking. He wants to go from visitation to habitation. But you gotta have a real relationship with Him. And you got to be prayed up and being with Hallelujah. Him. Hallelujah. Every single moment of the day. Hallelujah. Every day of the year, every second of the minute. Glory to God, every minute of the hour, God wants to hear from us. Glory to God. Hallelujah. And, and it takes loyalty. Glory to God. Um, my, my, our oldest daughter, she's not here today. Glory to God. She put something on her Facebook a couple weeks ago. I wrote it down, and she said, loyalty is a choice. Mm. I'm going to know it's the truth. <laughs> loyalty is a choice. Just like love is a choice. It's a choice. It's not something that just happens. You choose to love. You choose to be loyal. Glory to God. Hallelujah. We choose to be loyal to the things of God. Hallelujah. We choose to be loyal to other kingdom-minded people. We choose to be loyal to our family. Hallelujah. And we have to continue to choose to be loyal to the things of God. In times of crisis, the wise build bridges. Yes, God. While the foolish build barriers. Don't build a barrier during this time. This is not a time to alienate yourself from God. This is not a time to alienate yourself from the things of God. This is not a time to alienate yourself from the house of God. Please hear me. Hallelujah. Wise people build bridges in the times of calamity, not barriers. Praise is a bridge. Let me say it again. Praise is a bridge. Yes, God. Hallelujah. Solomon offered 1,000 bulls to God as a sacrifice, and it got God's attention. Mm. Hallelujah. Praise and adoration, in short, get God's attention. Yes, God. You want more of the presence of God in your life? Give him praise. Hallelujah. Wake up to the morning. Hallelujah. 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 Say hallelujah anyhow. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Anyhow. Give him praise. Give him praise. Glory to God. Some of you, some of us, amen, people all over, amen, have caught coronavirus and all of that, but praise God. Hallelujah anyhow. My God's going to heal me. Praise God. Glory to God. It doesn't matter. Give God praise in anything that you go through. Hallelujah. Because listen, how I many know that's one of the things that makes the devil mad? And this is what gets God's attention. Hallelujah. God showed up after the sacrifices. Hallelujah. That, that Solomon gave to him. We saw it again. We say it again. God showed up to Solomon after he gave him the sacrifices. Glory to God. Hallelujah. 
So we have to be, praise God, hallelujah, understand that there are some priorities to some things. Solomon was wise before God even gave him the gift of wisdom. This is what the Bible is showing us. Hallelujah. Why? Because he knew the law of priorities and Solomon got it all. Every leader, every child of God must establish a list of priorities and then learn how to put first things first. When Solomon became the king of Israel, he was given the opportunity to ask God for anything. And if God gave you the opportunity to ask him for anything, what would you ask him for? That's a serious question. Serious question. The only way that the question is relevant is if you be truthful. Because <laughs> to be honest, most of us wouldn't even be thinking of asking God for wisdom. But we God. You say, God, can I have 10 trillion million dollars? You know, God, can I have, you know, you, we would be asking God for all kinds of crazy stuff. Truth be told. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. But Solomon knew the law of priorities and put the first things first. Instead of asking God for riches and fame, he asked for wisdom to lead his people well. Turn to your neighbor and say, good answer, Solomon. Good answer, Solomon. He answered right. God responded by not only giving him what he asked for, but also with all of the benefits of the things that he didn't ask for. And this incident illustrates how effective prioritizing often works. When you put first things first, you frequently gain time for the non-essentials. And Solomon narrowed his way and he got it all. Watch this as I go to my seat. I'm sure that Solomon, he faced all of the options that we face today. Number one, he could have put easy things first. How many, how many of us do that? We put easy things first. Maybe God had come to you and said, what do you want? What do you, you, okay, you got my attention. Now what do you want from me, Brother Landon? What do you want from me, Brother CJ? What do you want from me? What do you want from me? He could have chosen to focus on the easy tasks ahead of him. Number two, he could have put fun things first. He could have chosen to focus on the riches and the fame. That's the fun stuff, the money, all right? The cars, all of that, that's the fun thing. He could have focused on number three, putting the urgent things first. Meaning that he could have asked for help in building the temple. God, just build the temple. I don't want to even have to do that. Let the temple be built. He could have asked for something silly or weird like that. Number four, he could have put hard things first. He could have sought favor with those who, who didn't like him, meaning those that, uh, that, that were around Israel, glory to God, that wanted to see their destruction. He could have asked for something like that, which would have probably been a noble request, some people probably would have said, all right? Get rid of my enemies, God. But he didn't do that. He put first things first. Instead, he chose to seek wisdom so that he could glorify God. And when you put first things first, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And the Bible says, all of these things shall be added unto thee. When you put first things first, glory to God. Hallelujah. How many know that God, hallelujah, bless you, man of God, will put everything, glory to God, hallelujah, into perspective, amen, concerning your life. Putting God first is the key. And this just can't be lip service because God weighs our hearts. Hallelujah. As I said earlier, God gave what Sol everything he, that Solomon wanted because he said this was in your heart. Amen. Hallelujah. So as I close this today, hallelujah. Say, God, hallelujah, search my heart. And if there's anything that's not like you, please remove it far from me. Amen. How many know you can't fool God? And when you are genuine, hallelujah, how many know you can't be God given? Hallelujah. If your plate is dry, it could be a heart issue. You're not doing the right things for the right reasons. Hallelujah. Glory to God. If you only do things when it's convenient for you, hallelujah. You might have a heart issue. Hallelujah. God doesn't want you just to visit him. He wants you to live. As a matter of fact, I said it right way. He wants to live on the inside of you. Hallelujah. This year is a year of habitation. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. And as I finish this, glory to God. Hallelujah. I say this. Let God have all of your heart. When your heart, hallelujah, glory to God, hallelujah, is right. Hallelujah, glory to God. Anything that you ask for God, 
God will give you more. Hallelujah. To follow your needs. Amen. From on the top, glory to God. Hallelujah. Anything on the top, glory to God. Hallelujah. Of your heart, glory to God. God is seeing. Praise God. Hallelujah. And let us be more kingdom minded. Glory to God. Hallelujah. The Bible says, seek ye first the kingdom of God. Hallelujah. And in this year, I want to encourage you to stay out of the cliques and stay in the kingdom. Too many cliques in churches. Glory to God. Why there's a million churches all over that got clicks, clicks, click, 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 click. All right? Glory to God. But well, God wants us to stay out of clicks. Glory to God. And stay in the kingdom. Glory to God. As we're in this new year, don't worry about it, baby. God doesn't want the music to stop. It's okay. As we're in this new year, glory to God. Hallelujah. Praise God. Let's just make hallelujah. Praise God. I promise. Amen. With our hearts. Glory to God. Hallelujah. That God, I'm going to be better. Hallelujah, God, Lord, anything that you want me to say, anything you want me to do, any way you want me to go, God, I'm usable, I'm available, I'm ready. Praise God. God, I don't want to just be lip service this year. God, I want you to live in me, God. Hallelujah. I don't want to just visit, Father God, Lord, I want you to inhabit me, glory to God, in this year. Does anybody feel that way today? Glory to God. Hallelujah. If you want to make a declaration, you can come on up here, we can declare that together. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Amen. For hallelujah, I believe, hallelujah, that God wants to renew in 2022. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. And that God has taken us from visitation to habitation as long as we allow him, glory to God, amen, to do whatever he wants to do in our lives. Anybody believe that today? Amen. Can we give God a hand clap right there? Anybody love God? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Anybody love him? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Sing this with me. Oh, Yes, it is Jesus. It is Jesus in my soul. If I could touch this, the hem of his garment, and his love has made me whole. Oh, it is Jesus. Yes, it is. It is Jesus in my soul, for I have touched the hem of his garments, and his blood has made me whole. Glory to God. Give God a hand clap right there. Hallelujah. 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 As was already said, hallelujah. He inhabits the praise of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I did a teaching, hallelujah, in last year. Glory to God. Hallelujah. About the praises of God. And when we praise God, we don't we can't see it with our visible eyes. Glory to God. But when we praise God, we're literally sending fire into the sky. Hallelujah. And on this first Sunday, amen, in 2022, I want to make the devil mad by sending fire into the sky. Hallelujah. What that spiritual fire does. Hallelujah. There are people that actually project. There are people that are doing things. There are demons and things like that. When we send fire into the sky, how I many know we eliminate and we destroy some things? Anybody feel like destroying some things? Hallelujah. In the spirit realm, hallelujah. I'm asking everybody to stand. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. And all I want to do is I want to give God seven hallelujahs. As we give them hallelujahs, I want you to turn around, glory to God, in your seat with every hallelujah. And I want the fire to go in all its directions, all over this place, even right now, God, hallelujah, in Jesus' name. So on the count of three, let's give them some praise in this place, and we're going to say hallelujah. One, two, three. Hallelujah! Come in. 
risen against us in judgment. Oh God, we condemn it even now, God, in the name of Jesus. We sit back and we work for it. Hey God, hallelujah, and we root in it. Uh, hallelujah, God, Lord. Hey, hey, we come to the air. Anything that's not like you, God, we send it back. Hallelujah, anything that has come, God, Lord, to be a warrior to the marine kingdom. Hallelujah, God, Lord, we pray that the warriors, God, Lord, will freeze us. Hallelujah, Father, God, anything coming through the air. Oh, God, we pray, God, Lord, that every word comes will be polarized. And God, even right now, God, Lord, I pray that any infirmity, hallelujah, Father, God, anybody is dealing with right now, be reversed, you be healing right now. Hallelujah, God, Lord, of your Jehovah Rapha attribute into our bodies even right now. Come on, pray for me, everybody. Glory to God, and I pray, God, that even right now that we're being healed. Oh, God, from the top of our, uh, hallelujah, the head of our, top of our head to the bottom of the thorns of our feet. Oh, God, we're going to go into this new year, God, Lord, Paul. Hallelujah, we're going into this new year, God, and strip. Hallelujah, God, Lord, we're putting on, Father God, Lord, the strip. You just be strong in the power of the Lord. Hey, God, Lord, and in your might. Oh, God, so we're walking, Father God, in strip. We're not going to apologize for being strong. We're not going to apologize, God, for having faith. God, we're not going to apologize, God, Lord, for loving you. We're not going to apologize, God, for wanting to worship you. We're not going to apologize for wanting to be in your presence. Oh, God, Lord, bless your people even now, God. And have your way, God, Lord, walk with us. Father, God, Lord, Father, God, Lord, hey, God, Lord, we pray, God, Lord, hallelujah, that grace and mercy will envelop us. Hallelujah, go before us. And may every enemy be scattered. Even now, God, in the name of Jesus. We trust your word. God, we believe you. We say every word of the enemy is a lie and we knock it down. We said you know the plans that you have for us. Plans to prosper us, not to harm us. Plans to bring us to an accepted end in you. So God, we receive your word. Every blessing of Jeremiah 29, 11 in your name. Oh God, and I call God, Lord, I cast it on all of these people in your name. Oh God, and I pray God and proclaim and declare that we are blessed. Hallelujah and highly favored. Hallelujah, God, Lord, in the name of Jesus. We thank you, God. Hallelujah. We honor you, God. Hallelujah. We bless your holy name. In Jesus' name we pray. We say amen. Hallelujah. Amen, amen, amen. Come on, let's give God a high praise. Can we give him a high praise?
where we got we have a cornerstone class. It's only four weeks. We actually become praise God, amen. And that's what you learn. I know you know this. You already know what y'all been with us for a long time, amen. But you learn a little bit more, amen, about me, Prophet Joanna, the denominations, the, I mean, how we, you know, everything that we believe and all of that good stuff. But we go through four weeks, amen, and you, um, and you finish what's called the cornerstone class and you get a certificate. And then that way you can, you can um, um, work, amen, praise God, in any office, amen, in any environment, amen, within the church. So we actually do that, and that's on Sunday mornings at 9 o'clock. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. So we praise God for each of you. Amen. So we just ask everybody to just come on up. Amen. That's here. You can shut that off. Glory to God. Glory to God. Hallelujah.